Welcome to Mammy's Kitchen again today. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited because I'm gonna do some things that I watched from a little, little girl, watched my grandmother's Mammy Clyde and Mammy Dig, and that was fried chicken in their skillets. And the iron skillets were such a, the only pots and pans that they used that I can remember in both their kitchens. We've got this iron skillet chicken that is moist and crunchy on the outside. It is perfect. I absolutely love it. Then I've got these corn sticks, which if you're my age or older, you will remember having corn sticks as a child. And these are golden yellow, crunchy on the outside, moist on the inside, and with some butter, they're perfect with this meal. Then we've got a summer salad. Anybody that has a garden knows that this is the best thing ever. And then we're gonna end with our skillet pineapple upside down cake which is decadent, it's so moist, it's so brown and golden on the outside, and so sweet. It's a perfect meal for the summertime. So let's get cooking. I'm gonna start off making this pineapple upside down cake in this iron skillet. It's a beautiful dessert and I love it in this iron skillet. It's actually a skillet for cornbread, but I like doing my pineapple upside down cake in this. First off, we're gonna start with the white cake mix. It makes it a lot easier, okay? And then we're gonna start with, instead of one cup of oil, I'm gonna use the pineapple juice from the pineapples. Makes it a lot better. And then we're gonna do the applesauce instead of the water. We're gonna do a little bit of vanilla, about a teaspoonful, and for it to be really, really moist, it doesn't call for it, but I like adding the crushed pineapple. Then we're gonna put three eggs in. And before we start mixing this, I'm gonna butter this skillet because I want my skillet to be in the oven and to get really, really hot. And I'm gonna put a little bit of brown sugar in here so we can lay those pineapples on top. So we're gonna stick this in here while we finish this. We're gonna mix it all together. So I used applesauce for the oil and then I used the pineapple juice for the water. And so we're gonna have a really tasty pineapple upside down cake. You know, there's a lot of substitutes for cake mixes. I buy a lot of chocolate cake mixes, vanilla cake mixes. I use sour cream. I use applesauce always in every cake that I make that calls for a cake mix. Don't be scared to play around and experiment because a cake is a cake. It's gonna come out beautiful and it's gonna be delicious every time. We're just bringing this out and it's really, really hot, so be careful. And now the fun part is we're gonna put some of these pine, we're gonna layer these pineapples in here. Gives it that buttery rich flavor with this melted butter in here. This is an old fashioned dessert too that my grandmothers made a lot. They made them in the big skillets and the cherries. I think this was something special, like on a Sunday when the preacher came to visit you because you didn't grow pineapples in Gravel Switch <laughs> or Braffordsville or cherries, but that's just really, really pretty. And then we're gonna pour this mix over this hot butter and if you have some extra, make you some pineapple upside down cupcakes, in which we are gonna have to do that today. All right, we're gonna put it in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until the toothpick goes in and comes out clean.
Yum, yum. I want to make for you today some cornbread sticks. I've had this cornbread pan since I've, I can remember. My mother had it and my grandmother always used one. And it was always so funny to have these cornbread sticks, but they were just perfect for dinner with your fried chicken. So we're gonna start off with like three cups of cornmeal, and that's gonna be self-rising cornmeal. And I'm gonna do all-purpose flour. And then I add a little bit of sugar to mine. I know my dad always told me that Mammy Clyde used sugar in everything, pinto beans, whatever, but it would bring, bring out all the flavors of the country ham. And so I cook just like my Mammy Clyde. And I'm gonna add two eggs. And that's what makes it moist and crunchy on the outside. And then the best ingredient is some buttermilk. And we make this every day at the restaurant. We don't do cornbread sticks unless it's a special occasion at the restaurant, but we fry it on the grill. And it's one of our most popular items. So I'm going to use about four cups of milk, just enough to get it moist. And while I'm doing this, I'm letting my skillet or the corn stick skillet heat up in the um, in the oven. I want that um, I want that iron skillet to be steaming hot. To get that crunch on the outside, I really want it to be very very hot because uh, I wanted to fry that cornbread as soon as I start putting it in the skillet. We would have biscuits in the morning, then we would start on the cornbread for dinner, and then of course it's cornbread every day for supper. We didn't have lunch at my grandmother's house. We had breakfast, dinner, and then supper. And that's perfect, so let's see if my skillet's hot enough to bring out. Perfect. Put this under here. And I'm gonna take a little measuring cup and I'm gonna put about a third of a cup in each corn stick. <laughs> Just something special about eating cornbread that looks like a stick. It's almost like a little dessert with that sweetness in there. Country cooking is really simple cooking. When people at the restaurant ask me for recipes, sometimes I'm a little embarrassed because you only have two or three ingredients. You used what was in your cupboards. You couldn't run out 30 miles to the nearest store. And you always had butter, sugar, and flour, and buttermilk. The pineapple upside down cake is smelling wonderful. When I cook chicken at the restaurant, I have about four of these huge iron skillets that's going at the same time. And I want to heat up my grease. It's just a vegetable oil or any type of oil, peanut oil, olive oil, anything will work. Lard is the best. And that's what I use in the restaurant. All right, so what I'm gonna do while my oil is getting really, really hot, I'm gonna cover this chicken. I'm gonna cover my chicken. I've got breast, thighs, and legs with half buttermilk and half milk. And I'm gonna let that soak for a little bit. And then while that is soaking, I'm gonna take my flour, and I've just got an all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna add some paprika And lots of salt. Then I'll actually salt my chicken again once it's in the skillet. And good old fashioned pepper. I think that was my grandmother Mammy Clyde's secret to her fried chicken. She had the best fried chicken. And uh, one of my uncles did tell me that I was the only person that fried chicken just like Mammy Clyde. And that was a huge, huge compliment. So thanks Uncle Jerry. All right, 
Iron skillets mean so much to me because that's what I watched my mother and my grandmothers cook on for years. There was never anything else on the stove but her iron skillets. Uh, so I try to cook just about anything that I can, mainly desserts and fried chicken in the iron skillets. There's no better flavor and it's just a big, big piece of the past for me. All right, so we've let our chicken soak in the buttermilk and milk mixture. And it's a messy job and wear gloves, but I choose not to get the old fashioned way. We're gonna dredge it in this flour. What I like to do before I put my chicken in is just throw some water on there. And if that starts popping, then you know your grease is really good and hot and ready. All right, so we're gonna start by dredging our chicken in our flour mixture, putting that in there. You can see it start bubbling and it's perfect. I wanna put the thickest pieces down in the grease first. That's gonna take the longest to cook. And my secret to my chicken, just like my mammy's, is to put the salt on it while it's frying. Add lots and lots of pepper. A lot of it's going to come off in that oil, but the taste that it leaves behind is going to be perfect. And I'm going to add a little bit more paprika. It gives it a little bit more of a crunchy, crunchy crust. And there we go. And we're gonna let this fry for about 15 minutes on each side. So it gets a good golden brown. Yum, yum. My favorite, favorite meal. Okay, this is a summer salad that I love to fix when the garden foods are ready, like your cucumbers, tomatoes, and onions, and a few peppers with vinegar and sugar. So first of all, we're going to dice our cucumbers that we've gone to the farmer's market or from my son's garden and gravel switch. Oh, and just the smell of that reminds you of summer. So we diced our cucumbers. And this is something that you can prep while your chicken and your other items are cooking. And so we're going to do an onion. This was something that you could eat throughout the day on those hot summer days because it's a cold, ice cold um, vegetables. You can do fine or you can do very thick, however you want it to taste. I like to do fine onions. I don't want a big chunk of onion in my mouth. To each its own. This is just a fun, easy vegetable that you can fix. A good side dish. And then we're going to take our ripe tomatoes. There's nothing, nothing like a beautiful ripe tomato right out of the garden. And we're going to dice it. This is really a colorful vegetable too, a colorful dish. I like to keep my fingers right behind this knife, coming down on my nails, so I'm for sure not to get stabbed. Those are beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. My son Stevie makes tomato sauces, stewed tomatoes. He gets so many tomatoes out of his garden. Okay, and then I'm going to pour about four cups of vinegar, about a half a cup of sugar. I told you Mammy Clyde put sugar in everything and I cook just like her. Just put it all in there. Then we're going to add some water.
And we're going to let this sit in the refrigerator for a couple of hours just to get really, really ice cold. If you're in a hurry, put it in the freezer. It won't hurt it. You just want it to be very ice cold and set in that vinegar water for a while. Stir it all up. And I'm crying because it's so dang good. Plus the onions are burning my eyes too. <laughs> yeah, and that smells just like summer. I'm so excited, so excited for summer. Goes right in the fridge. Well, let's go back over here and check on our chicken. Wow, this is beautiful, golden. Oh, I love it. So much satisfaction from something like this and seeing that golden brown, beautiful color. I could do this all day, every day. I could do this. This is when I started love, loving to cook. I was amazed when I was a little girl watching my grandmothers and all my aunts cook. I was so very fortunate to be able to be in the kitchen to see all this growing up for all those years. It just amazes me that you could take something like a chicken running around outside and put it in the skillet. <laughs> and we did. We literally watched my grandmother take the chickens, wring those chickens by their neck. <laughs> Oh my goodness, and we were just devastated for that poor chicken that was flopping around and then she would hang it up on the clothesline. How traumatic for children that we, you know, we would sit there and watch her do that. But I bet you, I bet you anything that we were not saying anything at that dinner table when we were eating this chicken. Okay, we're gonna let that fry a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit more pepper. I'm telling you, I like to season my food. You didn't have a lot of fancy foods back in the day. You had what was grown on the farm. So seasonings were very important. And I love using seasonings. Okay, we're gonna leave this for a little bit longer, but I can smell something so wonderful and it smells just like a pineapple upside down cake. I'm so excited. Watch this, it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, perfect. I don't even have to put a toothpick in this because I already know that that cake is perfect. It's so pretty, I don't even wanna turn it upside down. Both sides are beautiful. Okay, wish me luck that this turns out perfectly. It's either gonna stick, I'm not gonna have a cake on this plate, or it's gonna be perfect, so cross your fingers. I don't have a square plate, so it's gonna have to all fit on this round plate. Okay, here we go. <sighs> what do you think? I'm trying to fill the pan. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. My mammies would be so proud of me. Yes, this is exactly what I like to show off at the restaurant and put on the and put on my table here for when my kids come over. That's perfect. Oh, and it fits on my plate perfect. So go ahead and use your old cornbread bread uh, cornbread square skillet. That'll be fine. Okay, now it's time for the real test. Let's see how good it is. It's almost too pretty to eat. This is when I call for Robin or Francie to come and take a picture, take a picture, put it on Facebook. Oh, look how moist that is. That crushed pineapple's perfect. Get a little piece of that pineapple that's been cooking in that brown sugar and that butter. Mm. Mm. 
That's really, really good. That is the best cake ever. Perfect, perfect for a little summer meal. Yum. One more bite and then I'll get back to my chicken over there. <laughs> mm. If I could just eat desserts all day, I'd be the happiest cook alive. Oh, that is so good. If you want this recipe, come to Mammy's. I'd be glad to give it to you. I'll write it down for you the next time you see me. Yum. All right, let's get back to my chicken. I can hear it frying over here, ready to be turned. This is just perfect. It is so tender, so juicy. And I think that is the iron skillet. Keeps all those juices in there. Look at that brown grease. Yum. Of course, as kids, chicken legs were our favorite. And all the farm hands got the big breast meat. Oh, this is so beautiful. And just to hear that frying and that grease and that oil brings me back to my grandma, my grandmother's house. I was so fortunate, so lucky to have those memories. I really, really had the best grandmothers, Mammy Clyde and Mammy Lucille in the world. The bonnets, the aprons, everything about them was so perfect. They were just like storybook grandmothers and my memories of them will never fade. Okay, I'm gonna let it fry just a little bit longer, but something else is getting ready to come out of the oven. Our cornbread sticks. Ooh, perfect. Perfect. Just like Mammy Clyde. And again, we're gonna try to flip these. I'm gonna try to separate them first. I've overfilled them just a little bit. But I wanted them to be really nice and thick, very hearty. All right, here we go, second time. This old skillet is a lot older than me. And it works every time. These are perfect, just like I remember when I was a little girl. All you have to do is dip that in some big, good old pinto beans. Yum, add some butter. You've got the perfect cornbread sticks. So I've got a paper, paper towel lined but dish to put this in. Oh, and they look perfect. Look at that, that good crisp center. Mm. Wonder who will get that big thing. <laughs> I think the skin to me is the best part. Yum. And there you go. You've got your mammy's, your grandmother's homemade fried chicken in an iron skillet. Yum, yum. I love it. Thank you so much for coming into my home again today. I was so excited to show you how my mammy's cooked in their iron skillets to bring you this beautiful, fresh, delicious summer meal. Don't forget to eat local, shop local, and best of all, let's drink local. I love ya, and don't forget, come visit me down at Mammy's Kitchen. Bye-bye, y'all.